Welcome in to Uma's Lotus Lounge here on the Plenty of Fish app. Hi guys, we have a new show starting on Plenty of Fish today, Monday, March 4th, and it will be here every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So for those of you that are on the Plenty of Fish app, please feel free to drop by, come and let's start your week with a dose of healthy positivity. So in that energy in that aura we're just going to go ahead and start by listening to some singing bowls i have my little bowl here and what we're going to do is just vibe into the new new week with some sound therapy gosh i can't talk today <laughs> all right here we go welcome in guys and don't forget if you are actively participating in the live my top three gifters will get a weekly reading at the end of the show which will let them know what the energy is like this week for them. A lot of times people ask me, what should I do when I'm listening to singing bowls? And I say, close your eyes, breathe deeply, and allow the healing sounds of singing bowls to just wash over you. Take a nice deep breath in and exhale. Deep breath in and exhale. One more time, a deep breath in and exhale. All right. Now we've set our energy just through some simple breathing, listening techniques. We should be feeling a little bit calmer, a little bit more rested and ready for the week. 
Today we have an essay that's entitled, Why You Should Thank the People Who Have Hurt You Most in Life. The people who were able to hurt you most were also the people whom you were able to love the most. We aren't profoundly affected by people who aren't already deeply within our hearts. For someone to have that much importance in your life is sacred. Even when it goes askew, it's a gift to know someone who is able to truly affect you, even if at first it didn't seem like it was for the best. This is a really good paragraph because basically it reminds us, you know, that even a box of nothing, you've heard that story, right? That somebody gave someone a box of nothing and they said, even that is a gift. And we have to remind ourselves that in life, we can't just look for the joy that people brings us. We also have to appreciate the sadder things in life, the pain, the heartbreak, the betrayal, the abandonment, whatever it is, we have to appreciate it. We have to receive it because at the end of the day, it's still a gift. Difficult relationships often push you to change your behavior for the better. In feeling helpless, you learn to take care of yourself. In feeling used, you recognize your worth. In being abused, you develop compassion. In feeling like you're stuck, you realize there's always a choice. In accepting what was done to you, you realize that nobody has control at the end of the day. But in surrendering the need for something we'll never have, we can find peace, which is what we were actually seeking in the first place. I like that paragraph about dealing with difficult people because it's what I have learned over the years. I've been dating for about 30 years. And when I was younger, I was a little bit more toxic, right? I used to hold on to people or really hurt or be in pain when people left my life. I was resisting. But then as I got older, I realized I really valued my peace more than the company of someone else. So when things didn't go the way I wanted it to go, I would allow people to just leave out of my life. I don't need an excuse. I don't need a reason. I don't need closure. But when you leave, I still won't harbor hurt or pain towards you because I will focus or choose to focus on the good times that we had and trust that the universe will send me someone else to recreate those memories with someone else. Why you should thank the people who have hurt you the most in life, number three. What you learn and who you become is way more important than how you temporarily feel. After dating for so many years and going through so many unhealthy, toxic situations, I am so grateful to the people who participated in those things with me because they made me a better person. They made me the person that was able to attract the relationship that I am in now. They made me the person that is able to experience divine love, unconditional love, compassion, joy, and peace with another human being. So when someone hurts you, that is a temporarily feeling that you are feeling. What is most important is who you become through that experience, all right? why you should thank people who have hurt you most in life. Number four, you don't come across these people by accident. They were constructed to be your teachers and catalysts. In the words of C. Joy Bell, we're all stars that think they're dying until we realize we're collapsing into supernovas to become more beautiful than ever before. It often takes the contrast of pain to completely appreciate what we have. And it often takes hate to incite self-recognition. Sometimes the way light enters us is in fact through a wound. 
So that is a great reason to love people who cause you harm because their little digs at you creates that opening, opening for the light to come in. And the light is what we are all seeking. We all wanna be better. We all wanna do better. We all wanna evolve and grow. Why you should thank people who have hurt you most in life, number five. Even if it wasn't your fault, it is your problem and you get to choose what you do in the aftermath. You have every right to rage and rant and hate every iota of someone's being, but you also have the right to choose to be at peace. To thank them is to forgive them and to forgive them is to choose to realize that the other side of resentment is wisdom. To find wisdom in pain is to realize that the people who become supernovas are the ones who acknowledge their pain and then channel it into someone better. Not people who just acknowledge it and then leave it to stagnate and remain. I remember one time I had this mentor and she was supposed to be my mentor, but after talking to her in one conversation, I decided this wasn't the person for me. This woman uh, was divorced because her husband was cheating on her with his secretary, a younger woman. And even though they have been divorced for 12 years, she still couldn't get over it. She wrote a book, trash talking him, trash talking the lady, 12 years later, still single, no man in sight, and this deep, long-held resentment for her husband, her ex, and the woman. That's not who I want to be. We are all here as brothers and sisters of the same race, the human race. And I can't hold grudges. I can get mad at people. I can get mad at my family. Ask my family. I can get mad at them and I'll scream and I'll yell and I'll shout, but I forgive quickly because it's not that serious. And like we said in point four, these people bring out the best in you. They grow you. So what's the point in holding on to resentment? Why you should thank the people who have hurt you most in life. Number six. The people who have been through a lot are often the ones who are wiser and kinder and happier overall. This is because they've been through it, not past it or over it. They've completely acknowledged their feelings and they've learned and they've grown. They develop compassion and self-awareness. They're more conscious of who they let into their lives. They take a more active role in creating their lives, in being grateful for what they have and in finding reasons for what they don't. The thing is, you have to understand that every choice you make creates or breaks down your life. If you choose to have a fight with someone, then you choose to bring that drama into your life. If someone is unkind to you, you can choose to ignore it or you can choose to address it. Just this morning, I have um, an uncle of mine that usually posts rude or offensive comments on my page. And this morning, I posted this beautiful picture of a meal my man and I made. He made the wings. I made a Guyanese dish called cook up rice. And I posted a picture because it was just, it was such a good day. You know, we were hanging out, we were chilling, watching our shows. We got hungry. He whipped up some ch chicken wings. I whipped up some cook up rice. No thought to it, just in the flow. And it felt so good. I wanted to immortalize it on social media. So I did. And then he put on there, you know, a nasty comment about my food, what I made. So usually I ignore it. But today I said, you know what? I'm going to address it. And I did. I took his post. I took what he said. I plastered all over social media. And I said, this is why you have to be careful of who you let into your life. I chose to let my uncle be on my Facebook page. And if he, I know he's going to see it and he's going to feel some type of way about it. And I'm ready for that. But he has a choice now. If he wants to stay in my life, 
you can only post beautiful, positive, uplifting things. Or if you don't, I will delete you from my page, my friend list, and I will block you. Right? And I feel that a lot of times we have, as younger people in our families, we have to have this reverence for older people and we can't allow that because it messes with your mental. You know? So your choices. Your choices determine who stays in your life and who goes. Okay, we have two more. Why you should thank the people who have hurt you most in life. Number seven, it showed you what you deserve. Those relationships didn't actually hurt you. They showed you an unhealed part of yourself. They showed you a part of yourself that was preventing you from being truly loved. That's what happens when we finally get past hurtful experiences and terrible relationships. We realize we are worth more and we choose more. We realize how we blindly or naively said yes to someone or gave them our mind and heart space when we didn't have to. We realize our role in choosing what we want in our lives and by experiencing what seems like the worst, we finally acknowledge that it feels so wrong because we deserve so much more. That is a big reason why you should be grateful for people who hurt you, who bring you pain, because it makes you realize your worth. And I don't know about you guys, but for a lot of us, we weren't born uh, being told of our worth. We weren't born being um, recognized or appreciated or respected. We had to kind of find that for ourselves along the way. So when you have people who treat you less than you deserve, it instigates that need in you to do better and to want better. I can say that for myself. You know, I left a relationship I was in. I wasn't treated badly, but it wasn't enough. And I knew that that partner could not give me more than what he was offering doesn't make him a bad guy. It just means that whatever he was offering, it wasn't enough for me. And it was causing tension in the relationship. One, because he kept feeling like he wasn't enough. And two, I kept feeling like I was too much or I was asking for too much. So I left. I left the relationship. I know it caused temporary pain to that person, but I knew in time they would heal and they would understand that this just wasn't a go. And I allowed myself to be single and I allowed myself to wait on the person that can make me feel like every day is a holiday, which is what I have now. But it took me courageously leaving the comfort of something and trusting in the universe that something better is available. And it worked out. All right, final one. why you should thank the people who have hurt you most in life. Number eight, truly coming to peace with anything is being able to say thank you for that experience. To fully move on from anything, you must be able to recognize what purpose it served and how it made you better. Until that moment, you'll only be ruminating over how it makes things worse, which means you're not to the other side yet. To fully accept your life, the highs, lows, good, bad, is to be grateful for all of it and to know that the good teaches you well, but the bad teaches you better. So this week, as we start a new week, I encourage you to take joy in not just the good in life, but the bad also. Not just the wins, but the losses, because everything is geared to teach you so that you can make better choices, so that you can do better and be better. That is the message for the week. Hi guys, welcome in. This is Uma's Lotus Lounge. It is a new featured show here on the Plenty of Fish app. Uh, just to let you guys know, at the end of the show, which is gonna be in about 20 minutes, 
The top three gifters of the stream will get a weekly reading to let you know what the energy of the week is going to be. All right. So whoever's the top three gifters will get that. All right. Let's pull our crystal message of the week. Let's see what crystal wants to come through. Hi, Thick. Welcome for being here. Hi, Eli. Welcome in, everyone. Let's see what Crystal chose us for the week. So this is a crystal that is not well known. So um, if you like it, you can probably purchase it from your local crystal shop or Amazon or, um, you know, retailers. But if you like the properties of this crystal, I recommend that you get it. All right. Hi, King. Um, so welcome in to Uma's Lotus Lounge. Remember the top three gifters get a weekly reading for the week at the end of my show. All right. Unikite is the crystal of the week. Unikite says answered prayers. You've been doing great work recently to forgive, release, and focus on positivity and oneness. Because God respects your free will choices by choosing the healing path of love, you have opened the doorway for your prayers to be answered. God hears and answers all prayers and does not discriminate. However, if we have shut down our hearts to God's connection, we may not hear the whispered answers. A negative focus also casts doubt upon the likelihood of divinely guided plans working, lessening our faith. This card is a sign that you have shifted to a conscious connection with God's pure healing love. You are praying with sincerity and a willingness to be guided and helped. This positive shift within you is an answer to your own prayers for peace and happiness. The external circumstances will now shift accordingly as they are uplifted to the highest and best outcome about unikite this is actually a naturally bonded compilation of three different gemstones feldspar epidote and quartz which results in a lovely peach and green coloring unikite with its soft gentle energy is supportive of physical and emotional healing offering a reminder that we are all one with god's divine love so if you have been struggling to feel connected to your god source Remember, I say source because I want to respect everybody's religious and spiritual beliefs. Some people believe in a God. Some people believe in consciousness, universe, whatever. It is all okay. So if you've been feeling disconnected from your source, if you are requiring physical healing, emotional healing, if you are wanting your prayers to be answered, by this divine connection, you might want to get you a piece of unikite. You know, mostly people wear them as part of jewelry, like as on a necklace or a chain or on a ring or earrings, or you can just get a raw piece of unikite and put it in your pocket and walk around with it. All right. So I recommend you go to a crystal shop or you can go to Amazon and find, um, or, you know, one of those online Etsy stores and find you a good piece of unikite. People usually ask me, like, how do you pick um, a crystal? I like to usually buy my crystals in person at some of the trade shows or the uh, wellness fairs that they have because I like to kind of hover over them and just kind of, you know, I'm a healer, so my hand has energy. And um, I like to just kind of hover over the crystal and then feel the energy coming from each and then one just usually speaks to me sometimes you know it gets really hot or it gets really cold or vibrational or tingly um, different crystals speak to me in different ways you know uh, as you can see I always tend to wear <laughs> crystals I don't know if you guys are big crystal lovers like me but I always tend to have a piece of crystal on me at some point in time all right, that is the crystal message of the week.
we're now going to get into the law of attraction message for your week. For those of you that are new, you're probably wondering, what is this show? This is a featured show here on the Plenty of Fish app. And uh, featured shows are sponsored by the app to promote some energy, whether it's education or there's games or trivia or music. Uh, this show, we promote metaphysical wellness, and it's a way to start your week right, to get you into the right mindset, so that way you can have a wonderful week on good vibes and positivity. So all these things that I'm doing are helping to increase your vibrational uh, level, to increase your positive vibes, make you feel better. So that way when you go out into the world, you go to your job, you go meet people, you are full of love. And that love translates to other people and other people and that's how we spread the love in the world, okay? So thank you for being here and thank you to those of you that gift and support the stream. You know, on Plenty of Fish, I have to hit a 50k goal every week to keep my royal badge and um i like it here so i do appreciate the gifts you guys send to help me keep my badge all right here is the law of attraction message of the week i can praise abundance wherever i see it if you seek financial well-being for yourself you must praise it wherever you see it if you would like more abundance for yourself personally or for others you care about, you must not criticize those who are experiencing abundance. When you criticize or condemn or push against anything, you activate an opposing vibration to what you seek. Every time, no exceptions. So, when you see someone doing something in life, are you filled with anger, hate, envy, jealousy? Or are you filled with appreciation, gratitude, love, admiration? What are you filled with when you see someone doing better than you? For me, I'm filled with admiration. I see all these other streamers on Plenty of Fish that are doing well, and I say, that's gonna be me someday. That's what I do when I immediately see somebody doing something that I wanna do. I say, that's gonna be me someday. And I know that's gonna be me because they're doing it. And if they're doing it, that means that I can do it as well, right? So this week, I can praise abundance wherever I see it. Think about the people that you want to be like. Think about the people that are doing things that you want to do. And if you've been feeling envy or jealousy or hate or anger, switch it in this moment and thank them and say, thank you for showing me that it can be done. That's number one, it can be done and two, some people are showing you how to do it. They're showing you how to do it through their consistency, through their actual sharing. Hey, I made a million dollars. This is how I did it. You know, be grateful for all the situations that come into your life. And if you can do that, things will start to change for you quickly. All right. So now we're going to move into our exercise for today. You can have a pen and paper if you'd like. It usually helps. But if you don't have a pen and paper, that's okay. You can do this in your mindset as well. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to play the singing bowl. And I just want you to close your eyes. And we're going to manifest what we want to see happen this week. All right, do you think you can do that? Manifest what you want to see for yourself this week. Close your eyes. You can go through each day on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or you could just go big. This is what I want happen this week. And let's catapult into using the law of attraction 
to consciously create the life we are trying to create. So just close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale. And focus on what you want to create this week. Take a nice deep breath in and exhale. Great spirit, you who are known by a thousand names and you who remain the unnameable one, we thank you for the gift of life and we ask that you take all these manifestations, all these dreams and visions and goals that we have and we catapult it out into the universe to come back to us times 10. Everything we ask for, we ask that we receive. Everything that we desire, we ask for it to manifest. So be it and so it is. All right, there you go. We have now set the energy for the week, calling upon the law of attraction and all the positive good vibes in the universe to create something that is hopefully going to be what we wanted or even more you never know law of attraction tends to work very quickly okay all right coming on down to the close of our show um if we don't have any gifters that's okay i will end with some affirmations for everybody and then we can end our show but if we do have gifters i will do a weekly reading for those top three that send me the gifts so you can know what the energy of the week will be like. Okay, we have our message for the week is make no judgments. Make no judgments. Are you struggling with a person with whom you disagree? Are you feeling threatened or annoyed by the unsettling behavior of someone near you? Are you struggling with an individual who you feel might be less enlightened than you? Your soul is alerting you to review your relationship in a more neutral light. Your divine energy is calling you to refrain from judging others. Don't perceive another as wrong simply because they don't share your point of view. Allow for differences without making this a battle. Your divine invitation, open your mind and heart and understand that each person has their own path, but that ultimately all roads lead to Rome. Stop viewing the world through the subjective lens of right and wrong and don't attempt to force your views upon others. Listen to your higher self while at the same time respectfully allow others to do the same. Who knows, you might even learn. Make no judgments. So this week you're being called to be in awareness instead of be in judgment. As things come up, it's very easy for us to go into judgment. 
that's wrong, that's right, that's good, that's bad. But wouldn't it be interesting if this week we just go into this week with this energy of, that's interesting, that's interesting. How interesting, you're interesting. It's very interesting, right? That's what I do when I find myself getting ready to make a judgment. I catch myself and I say, it's not for me to judge. People are living their lives, people are doing what they're doing, and it may not be the way I would do it, but that doesn't mean I have to judge them, you know? So judgment subtracts from your life, awareness adds to your life. You can play a simple game. This is what I do. You can play a simple game and you can say, you know what? Every time I make a judgment, I lose $5,000 out of my bank account. And nobody wants to lose money. Or you can say, every time I have awareness that somebody's living their life the way they want to live their life, I receive $10,000. Play the game and see at the end of the week how much money you have in your imaginary bank. If you have like a negative balance, negative 4,000, you know, whoa, okay, I made a lot of judgments this week, all right? And just for fun, Imagine you already have 10,000 in the bank. That's your starting point for the week. Every time you make a judgment, a thousand gets taken out. Every time you create awareness or appreciation for people, 10,000 more gets added in. Let's see how much you have at the end of the week. All right? So that is your message of the week. Make no judgments. All right, this brings us to the end of our show. I do have one gifter, which is Brooklyn King. Thank you so much for gifting me. I'm gonna give you your weekly reading now, and we have space for two more gifters, because remember, whoever are my top three gifters will get a weekly reading to know what the week is looking like for you, all right? And then we will end with affirmations for everybody so you can start your week in the most amazing and positive energy that you can. Okay, so King, thank you for being my gifter. Let's see what your week is going to go like. We have the beginning of the week, the middle of the week, and the week end. Okay. So King, you get the three of air today for Monday and Tuesday. This is a card of endings. It could be a breakup card if you're like ending something with someone, but it can also be a card of healing. So Monday and Tuesday is about your heart space, about checking in with your heart and seeing how you feel about things, about life, about people, about your goals, your aspirations, where you are. If you're feeling any sort of lower energy or lower vibrational energy, your spirit guides are reminding you, you have choices. You can choose to stay in that lower energy or you can choose to heal it, either through yourself by, again, praise, recognition, appreciation, prayers, or working with someone like a coach to get you to shift your mindset to look at whatever it is you're going through in a more positive light. Your message for Monday and Tuesday is don't let these energies get you down. Whatever was meant to end in your life was meant to end. And whatever it was, it's just being removed to create space for something bigger to come in. All right, that's your message for Monday and Tuesday. For Wednesday and Thursday, you have the nine of fire. This is about boundaries and protecting what you are creating. So you might have some conflict come in on Wednesday and Thursday, maybe people wanting to tell you how to live your life or what to do, and spirits reminding you, it's not up to anybody but yourself. You get to create the life that you want for yourself. So whatever conflict comes up on Wednesday, Thursday, just politely, gently decline. Thank them for their opinion, thank them for their advice, but remind them, I'm living my life and I got this. I've done well so far in my life and I'm pretty sure I can do well as I continue on, okay? So nine of fire is your message. 
And then for the weekend king, you get Knight of Air. And Knight of Air is all about fast moving communication. So as you continue to protect your energy during this week and doing what you know is right for you, guess what happens? On the weekend, we have a lot of communication coming in that supports you in moving ahead with your life. So fast moving um, communication coming in. This could be text, emails, messages. If you've applied for jobs, this could be like, you know, all that information coming in. Carefully review all the things that come in and keep choosing those things that are in, in alignment with where you want to go. All right. That is your message for the week. Welcome in, everyone. I have space to give two more readings to my two, uh, my top three gifters. So if there's two more people that want to send me some big gifts to get on my top three gifters, I will do your weekly reading for you. But aside from that, if there's anyone else in here who would like a message, please put a one in the comments and I will give you your affirmation of the week. King, I will start with you. Actually, I will start with myself because I love these affirmations and I definitely want to get an affirmation of the week. Okay. My affirmation of the week is I am grounded. I am grounded. I am connected to the clearest, highest vibrations of love in the universe. I receive that. And King, your affirmation is, I am intentional. I am intentional. I am consciously creating a life I love, which is exactly what your reading was for the week. All right, I'm going to do three general affirmations for anyone who wants to receive them. Welcome into Uma's Lotus Lounge. We are going to give you your affirmation of the week. I will pull three random affirmations. So just choose a number, one, two, or three, and that will be your affirmation of the week. Affirmations are really great ways of um, bringing in, inviting in positivity to your life. By repeating the affirmation, you invoke that positive energy. It helps with your manifestations. It helps raise your vibration and just make you feel better, all right? So I recommend that whatever affirmation you choose, one, two, or three, or all three, it's no judgment here, that you repeat it 10 times, okay? Repeat it 10 times, or you can do the three, six, nine rule and repeat it three, six, or nine times, or write them down three, six, or nine times. Whatever feels right to you, just do that, all right? So let's give you your affirmation of the week. For those of you that chose affirmation one, I am committed. I am committed. My faith in the journey is stronger than my doubts and fears. I am committed. My faith in the journey is stronger than my doubts and fears. That is affirmation one. For those of you that chose affirmation two, I am authentic. I am authentic. My authentic self is my most powerful state. I am authentic. My most authentic self is my most powerful state. And finally, affirmation three, I am magnetic. I am magnetic. I am attracting my wildest dreams with ease and peace. I am magnetic. Those are the affirmations of the week. Choose one, choose all three, say them, repeat them three, six, nine times or 10 times and watch the energy shift for you. I want to thank you guys all for attending my first Uma's Lotus Lounge here on the Plenty of Fish app. Thank you so much for being here. And if you would like to be part of this show, download the Plenty of Fish app, come to live streams, look for my name, Uma B1111, 
I will be here every Monday at 11 a.m. to do this show. Thank you guys.